Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I am in Petaling Street, Kuala Lumpur, and I want you to come along with me to do some shutter therapy. And today, I want to talk about why I think minimalist approach is the way to go for street photography. Let's do this. I always believe that minimalism is the approach when it comes to street photography. Less is more, as the saying goes. I always carry very little, just one camera and one lens. In this case, this is the Fuji X100F. It has a fixed lens. And overall approach, thinking, considerations when we are shooting, camera settings, everything should be minimal so that we can just focus on the photograph that we are taking and the story that we are telling. I think minimalism is the way to go forward and I see a lot of people struggle in doing this. To keep things minimal, I like to work with smaller cameras and smaller cameras have several very good advantages for street photography. Number one, you appear less threatening. Whether you're doing street portraits, you approach a stranger, having a smaller camera will show that you are friendlier rather than a huge threatening black box, something very serious and monstrous, right? Like a, a huge DSLR. Also, if you are a candid photographer, you're hiding in the corner, trying not to touch the scene, a smaller camera will help you to hide better as well. And of course, smaller camera for photo walks like this, we are walking hours and hours under the hot sun. It is so much easier to handle. It causes less pain or stress to the wrist, your fingers, your shoulders. It will overall be better for your body. Carrying a small camera will definitely help in the long run. I have friends who suffer from wrist pain, slip disc, back pain, shoulder pain, all kinds of pains carrying huge DSLRs when they shoot on the street. Now the question is if they can afford tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear, why can't they just buy a smaller camera to help them shoot better on the street? I also believe in using one lens, just one lens for street photography. I see a lot of people that carry the huge camera and many lenses in a huge backpack. They carry the 7200 Super Telephoto, they want to carry a, an ultra wide angle, a macro lens, a fish eye, all kinds of lenses that they don't even use when they shoot on the street. I believe in one lens and one lens only, it doesn't matter which lens you choose, whether it's wide angle 24, 28, 35 or my favorite 50 or anything longer. I think it works. Just choose one and stay with one. Don't overcomplicate things. With that one focal length, you actually take away the choice or the complication of having to choose focal length. You don't have to worry about, ah, what if I need to compose wider? Ah, what if I want to shoot that bird in a distance? Ah, what if I want to take a photograph of a spider? No, you are doing street photography. Any lenses like 35, 50 or 28, they will do a fantastic job. And here I have the 35 and I'm sticking with this focal length for the rest of the session. Hi. <laughs> what are you shooting with today? I am shooting with the Canon PowerShot S95. Okay. <laughs> Why a small camera today, Andrew? Because 
I want I want to get back to the no need to think, just shoot. Just shoot. Yes. And there's not much setting to be with, just coin and shoot. And actually coincidentally today the topic of my video is minimalist in street photography. So carrying less and using small cameras. So you actually fit very well in my topic today. So what's your thought of small camera? Do you like small cameras? I like it. Um, it's really easy. You just look at what you want to shoot and then you shoot it. But at the same time, uh, perhaps the response is a bit slow if you want to cap capture some mm, Of course. And then we have John. Hello everyone. <laughs> Actually, I think uh, Andrew forgot to bring his brain. That's why he got a small camera. No need to think. No need to think. No brain. No brain. John brought his belly. <laughs> <laughs> to, to match the big ass A74, I guess. And I've got a 50 millimeter with me. I've got a 16-35 in my bag. So big! So, yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> okay, stand here, so stand here. <laughs> the belly, right? <laughs> <laughs> so does, does size matter, John? Uh, in this case, I think the A74 does matter because it's a very, very workable camera for a lot of situations, including of this street photography. All right. All right. Can't and wait to see your shots. Here, it's going to be nice. So, awesome. We'll see how it goes. All right. One consistent advice that I always give to new photographers, especially those doing street photography, is do not overthink. It is so easy to get into analysis paralysis where you have too many things to consider. You're thinking about composition, you're thinking about camera settings, you're thinking about the lighting, you're thinking about the story that you're telling, you're thinking about so many things at once. What shutter speed to use, what focal length to use, sometimes even which camera to use if you carry multiple cameras. Now there are hundreds of thousands of options or approach when it comes to photography. Now it is important to simplify things. Ask yourself this question. What is the most important thing you want to do in that one single photograph? If it is to freeze motion, then control the shutter speed to freeze motion. If you want to blur the background, you want to create shallow depth of field to isolate your subject, then go to aperture parity, control the F number. Ask yourself one thing, just one thing. Don't do a hundred things in a photograph. It doesn't matter if you fail to achieve other objectives. Just keep that one objective in mind. If you successfully executed that, then that is a good photograph. A, a photograph should have a good story to tell. It should be well composed and it must have good lighting. These are the basics. Sometimes we can't achieve everything at once, but if you just get one or two things right, then I think it is a successful photograph. So Andrew, what's your experience with the minimal setup, being minimalist for street photography? Nice, but not enough dynamic range. <laughs> not enough dynamic range. <laughs> you wish you have bigger sensor cameras? I will see what I can do when I edit it. Maybe ah, I can still pull out more. Some before. details. Yes. How is the Sony A7 IV doing? The A7 IV cannot remove the excavator over there. I don't think it's a one for phone. I guess it's unique in a way that hey, like what Robin said, have you taken Masjid Jamei with the excavator right there? <laughs> so the photo is unique.
Another tip that I can share when it comes to minimalist approach in street photography is do not obsess about camera settings. I see too many photographers, they waste too much time and effort in worrying about getting the best aperture, shutter speed and ISO, they're adjusting constantly. They're shooting in full manual. Nothing against shooting in full manual, but hey, why don't you let the camera do the job? Now, the thing about street photography is what truly matters are your subject content, the decisive moment, the drama, the impact, the story that you are telling. Now, if you spend too much time tinkering with full manual settings, you are just taking your attention away from these more important things that make or break a street photograph. Now, I suggest that we delegate some of these settings to the camera. These days, the camera comes with very smart features. They are more than capable to handle a lot of things. I set the ISO to auto. Sometimes I shoot in full program mode where I don't even have to worry about any camera settings and just grab my shot. Now pay attention to what matters more. It is the story that you're telling. It is your subject content in your street photograph. Another important thing is not to edit too much when it comes to post-processing your street photography images. It is important to keep minimalism in mind. There are many people who would over exaggerate the editing, slide the saturation bar all the way, do the super harsh HDR. I think it just doesn't look good for street photography. It is a type of documentary. It's supposed to be a representation of real life. If you exaggerate or over edit your images, I think it just defeats the purpose. I just do a little bit of tweak, a little bit of straightening, cropping, minimal cropping, exposure tweaks, contrast, recovering some shadows and highlight, and that's it. I don't change the color tones. I don't change much the photograph is almost as good as straight out of camera and that's what it's supposed to be to keep the original essence of the street photography so Andrew got some National Geographic worthy shots already no can win some awards do exhibitions yes best combat camera pictures <laughs> John can sell some photos already sell prints uh, after what got sealed <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to share about minimalist approach to street photography. I hope you've benefited from my sharing. If you've enjoyed looking at my photographs, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way. It'll definitely help me to continue making content and publish them right here. Also, please give me a thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, stay safe, go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye. <laughs> we have just finished our photo walk and we are sitting down in a coffee shop. We are going to have our lunch now. Thank you.